All right, we're live. What? Actually, knuckle boys in the crib. What's up, Chris? Yo, yo, what's up? Good man. Long time no speak. Johnny, I know I missed y'all boys. It's Johnny Dubs in the the bottom next to me. I like touch. What's up, Johnny? What's up, man? Ready to talk some MMA, bro? How you feel? Oh, I'm I'm ready. I love it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's get into it, man. We I mean, we have a new year. Here. We got a new light. We got a new light heavyweight champion. That's some retirement. Uh, can we can we put an asterisk next to that champion? Uh, why would you? Give me, give me some good reason why. Uh, he was fighting a uh, a, a washed uh, old man. For a belt that uh, neither one of them had any claim to, uh, it, it would be a better. It'd be better to have it be an interim belt uh, because it's not a linear uh, championship. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, 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 would, would that make Jury have an asterisk as well? Would Yuri have an asterisk? He fought that same. Well, he, fought, he fought the. He fought uh, a Glover that. Did not go to war for five rounds. So Jamal Hill had a jury, uh, a Glover who went five crazy rounds, all out war. Uh, so that takes a toll on anyone. Like you, you leave a part of yourself in the ring when you go those like absolute brawls. So Glover had already been diminished, uh, and he was the champion. He had beat the champion. So the linear belt. Uh, is, is at stake. But, uh, Jamal... Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, may, I would say maybe. Here's why. Because Glover's 40. What, 44? How old is Glover? Old. Is he yeah, old about 44, 45. Yeah. 44? So he was 40... He was, what, 43 when he fought Yuri? Yeah. He's been in countless wars previous to Yuri. I beat by Jones, by uh, Rumble, by Gustafson. It wasn't like he was some spring chicken or he was like, um, he hasn't been in wars prior to Yuri. So my question remains, is that me? Is that is Yuri's uh, claim to the title tainted because he fought a diminished quote unquote over when this diminished Glover still beat Jan Blahovich, who was the champion um, Beforehand, that was the same guy. So, I guess my my main argument was uh, that it's not the linear belt, right? Because he didn't. No one, no champion was beat. Glover wasn't champion. Jamal Hill wasn't champion. Jerry's the champion. Jerry beat, beat the former champion. Who about you know what I mean? So, well, Yuri, wait, wait, hold on, wait. Didn't Yuri got the belt from Glover, right? Right. But and Glover got the belt from Jan Blahovich. Correct. Yep. All right. So we know where the belt, where where it started. Jan Blahovich lost to to the washed up, war ridden, over to share. Uh, I, 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 that's that's only after the jury fight. Oh, only after the jury fight. So could it be an argument that he looks washed because he fought a guy that's superior? I can make that. I, I, so I'm I'm not saying. All right. Let's not say Jamal Hill is superior. He's like that. That was not a. A, uh, that was not a very good fight, in my opinion. It was, it, think... was not a, it was not a good fight if you bet money on Glover. If you had, if you uh, had, I, 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 didn't, I don't know. Money. That was a pretty good fight. Was I thought fight. it was a pretty good fight. <laughs> like, I thought it was really good. Jamal Hill, like, I was on the Glover train, bro. Like, I was like, Glover's going to fucking just demolish this dude. Like, he's going to just either take him down and make him work or fucking make me knock him out, but... When I saw Jamal Hill, they just piecing him up, bro. Like it was, I was, I was shocked. So I, I don't want because I wanted Glover to win. Oh, I'll give, oh, give oh, me a second. I was, I, I, I want to say this too. I was really impressed by uh, Jamal Hill's ability to, to stop the takedown because it wasn't as if Glover just wanted to make it a kickboxing match. He tried. He tried to engage in grappling, and 
He did get healed down a few times, but when he did, he wasn't able to maintain ground control. And he also wasn't able to keep Hill on the ground um, with the multiple yep. attempts. It wasn't just one attempt. So I, watching the fight, it went all five. And every every time, I was like, I didn't see um, what I thought would be a big edge in Glover's uh, grappling game. Because Glover, obviously, has the, the credentials of being an um, excellent grappler. So I don't want to uh, diminish that Jamal Hill put on probably the best performance of his career, right? Like he was perfect in all the places he needed to be perfect. My question is, is he going to be able to replicate that against other fighters? Well, he doesn't have to. You, well, every fight's different. No, no. You, don't have to, you don't have to replicate the fight you had previous. You have to, as a right. champion, you have to always rise to the occasion. Because you're going to get a new... Yeah, I, every, I, I, every, <clears throat> Right, so every single time, you, when you're the champion and you defend your belt, you're going to get the best guy in the world, most likely, unless your name's, like, you know, Connor or something. Most likely, you're going to get the best possible guy in that division. So you're going to have to, as a champion, and that's the reason why being a long-reigning champion means so much, you're going to get everybody's best every single fight that you compete in. You're going to fight a championship fight every single time. So, that's, I mean, what gives, that's what gives the it gives guys like um, ABJ or GSP or um, Anderson Silva, guys who were like long reigning champions. That's what gives them so much clout. They fought the best of the best and and beat them for years. So Jamal lost to Paul Craig. Paul Craig lost to Johnny Walker. How's like that? This whole division is just a weird one. That's what. That's why MMA math doesn't work. Like you can say, like, okay, well, not in this division. It, it never does. It, it just does. It just never works. Like you can take a guy who, like you said, um, Jamal Hill, for instance. Let's get this, this case study with, with Hill. Hill um, got his arm broken by Paul Craig. Paul Craig got his light shut off by Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker got his light shut off by Jamal Hill. So it's like it's every any given Saturday. We could have a new light heavyweight champion, given the fact that the current light heavyweight champion um, has been in the mix with the top guys already, and has had. Um, he's only got one loss in his career. He's only he's 11, eleven and one, but his one came from one of the uh, guys who's on the same card with him, in Paul Craig. But it's not like these guys can't evolve. They're, they're all young. The only one that's not too young is Jan. He's uh, climbing up there. I think he'll be 39 or 40 this year. Correct. Well, they lost Uncle Ayev. Uncle Ayev is no longer with the UFC. He a- What? Really? Yeah. Well, you didn't hear his post-fight press conference uh, after the um, decision. He, with he, he, uh, oh, I think he was emotionally yeah, talking at that time. Yeah, I haven't heard any official statements, and he's still linked, uh, listed as number two. The division. Yeah, he's still number two, but damn, he was kind of salty after the uh, announcement of the draw. But I had Jan uh, in uh, the fight, honestly. Yeah, I, I think Jan won that fight as well. I uh, I don't like, like, Joe Rogan pissed me off when he was pressing Jan, who had just gotten, you know, his head hit a bunch, trying to get him to admit to a loss. When he's like, you know, I don't know. You know, I thought I did enough. I got to see it again. Do you think that's why Jan said what he said about giving? Just go ahead and give him the belt. I think Jan 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 would know better than anyone else. I thought I think I thought Uncle I have won the fight, even though Jan dominated the early the early part of the fight. He dominated it with a lot of good um, good low kicks and good distance good distance control. But toward the championship rounds, like the fourth and the fifth round, he got completely dominated by Uncle I. Well, I mean, is it domination? He was laying and praying. He wasn't really doing too much with the top position. Well, you said you just said that he took a lot of head hits during the interview. Which one is it? Did he get Did he get laid and prayed on, or did he get hit in the head? I, <laughs> I mean, like they both that, can't be true. Last, that last like minute of the fifth round was when he started having action. Was that the ten eight round? round? Yeah, that's the alleged ten eight round. Um. And it wasn't, like, you have, what, eight minutes of just laying and praying, and then you have, like, a short burst of, like, 
ground and pound, okay. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's enough to win a championship. I think the split draw was the best outcome for everyone. Um, well, it's, 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 round the, it's, one. The, it's definitely the, the realistic outcome. Because, like, right now, as we stand, that was the call. The call was a split draw. And there could be arguments made for both sides, whether you were on the Goliath camp or were you on a Blahovich camp. But they called it a split draw. And then that belt then became, um, you know, up for grabs. And then I think it wasn't it wasn't it originally supposed to be Glover and Ankalaya for the title? Yes. Uh Glover and <clears throat> Yuri for the title. No, right? after Yuri uh got a shoulder injury. They wanted Ankalaya oh, to and fight. Then, yeah. yeah, but then Glover said, Fuck that. He need more time. Okay. So Glover, Glover yeah. asked for hey, can you push it back till Brazil? You know, I want a little more training to be able to go out against this guy. And they were like, No, fuck you. And, uh, I don't know. I, what I don't understand is why Jiri had to be, have the title taken when uh, Nganu sat on the title for over a year. It wasn't taken. Jiri well, he, he vacated. He vacated. Got, like he vacated. a samurai. He handed so, the title back. I, he gave a refund. So, he said in a tweet in a Instagram live that he was asked or whatever to give it. Like, he didn't want to, his own words. So That's, not, that's also not what, he, he's not what he said. He's, in his own words, he said that he was, uh, he's not able to defend it. So as, like, a samurai, he would just vacate the title. That's what, he's, that's what, um, all, that's what all Jerry's camp said. Well, I, 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 I'm just going off of what I saw uh, his, like, uh, Instagram post that he was talking in. He's like, I, didn't, I don't I didn't want to. This whole thing started off as is Jamal Hill's championship legitimate? Should it get an asterisk? I don't believe so because who then would get the championship? Who, do, who deserves the championship? So when I say asterisk, I, I mean that as a uh, this is not the true champ until he faces Yuri, right? Like so basically, when, if he, so if Yuri never comes back, he's never the champ. Uh. No, that's not the case. Okay, then, I mean, well, if, if Yuri never comes back yeah, well, and he yeah, okay, wins well, the belt, yeah, well, if Yuri never, if Yuri has severe knee injury. What if he never fights again? That's a shoulder, and uh, he, apparently, he had, he had an injury prior to the shoulder. He's been out. Yuri's been out of action for a while, right? No, he was supposed never. to fight on. Uh, no. When was it? December. When was, when was Yuri's last fight? Was that May? June? June, right? May? Something like over the summer, right? right? May, versus, June or May? Versus Glover? Yeah, it's when they were in Singapore. It was one of them pre UFC pay per view events for us. Okay, so let's let's go back here. Let's look at this guy right here. Well, check this out. They could have made that. Um, Yuri could have kept the title. They could have made the uh, Ankalaya versus whoever an interim belt. You know, they they do that in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're doing that with Al Jermaine, right? Are they? Wait, 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 wait. We'll let's, get into it later. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Let's not uh, go on a detour. <laughs> wait. Is, is that happening now? Wait, John, we're not going on a detour. <laughs> we're going to stay on topic for now. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll reach the exit. No, I, I haven't even heard, though. Okay, you got me. You made me want to talk about it. The last thing I seen was uh, Aljamain's supposed to fight Cejudo, but if he doesn't fight, you already know who's going to fight for the interim. Fruity Pebbles versus Olympian. So. Uh, okay, you cringe. Okay, the future okay. champ against the cringe champ? Yep. All right, uh, I stay, I am I was wrong. You're right. It was an injury. My bad. It was a, it was a shoulder injury, not a knee. I'm I'm confusing fighters. Um, what, what's, yeah, that, what's, that this, was what's the story? Yeah, what's, what's the story with uh Rakic? What's what's up with him? Is it is he has the knee injury? Yes, he uh, has the knee injury. Who was he fighting? Uh, Jan, right? He was fighting Jan, and he uh got the <clears> knee injury. He <throat> tore his knee in that fight. Yeah, yeah. He well, should be back soon. Jan. 
Jan looked good in that uh, fight, though. He was looking good. He, he did look good, but I that first round I was giving it to Ray Kid. That's one. I was, or maybe I'm misremember. I remember one one or. But yeah, I, I, I can't remember when he injured. Was it the first or the second round? I want to say it was the second. Second. All right, check this out. Yeah, this is what's going to happen with the light heavyweight division. It's happened before. Because I could only think of maybe two dominant champs, and only one of them was truly dominant. Oh, you got John Jones, oh. who was the man, and then before him, the only person that offended at least three times, I believe, was Chuck Liddell, right? Yeah. I believe that's right. So in between that time span between Chuck Liddell and John Jones, that title was passing around like. Uh, How long did yeah. Rashad have? I, I don't want to make that analogy. He, he, he like, only won fight. Most, most of the fight, the um, 205 champions only held it for like maybe one or two fights. Yeah. Like I said, Chuck Liddell and John Jones are the only ones that defended more than twice. And that's. Something uh, you see with the uh, heavyweight as well, you know, because um, Stipe is one of like the has like the highest uh, honors with like defending that belt. Three, like, the most, yeah, three. But yeah, he's like the he like, fought the same one. person twice. Oh well, three, <laughs> three is the max for heavyweights. <laughs> But like uh, I was saying, with light heavyweight, so, uh, it's going to pass around. I'm telling you, Jamal Hill might be able to defend it once or twice. Somebody's going to beat him. These guys are all bad matchups for each other. I don't see nobody yeah. being dominant. Maybe Jamal Hill. Maybe. He's got a lot of skill that's improving every day. So, if if he turns around and he's uh, he just pulls a, um, a Volkanovski and he just he saw him getting better and better as a champ, then, yeah, he has a good shot. But if, you know, you see it a lot with these champions, they win it and they they they, uh, they lose their hunger, you know what I mean? They lose that edge. Damn, I'm trying to pull up his uh, age and stuff. It won't this damn... Who's age? How old is Jamal Hill? Is he uh, under 30? I think he's like 27. Ooh, yeah. young man young. still. He hasn't touched that 33, 34 mark yet, the prime. That's good. That's real good. Wait, uh, Jamal Hill? Oh, no. Never mind. He's relatively young to, to MMA. He only has 12 fights. That's another thing, yeah. He said he's been Crazy. fighting for a while, just not in the UFC. Okay. Well, he had, his, his professional record is 12, uh, 11, 1. He is 31, actually. Okay, so he's about to reach his prime. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I, I do think you're you're right that well, we're going to see a, uh, a round robin kind of thing with that, that division, which I think there's something to be said for, for that being a healthy for the sport. Because I don't, I don't... I mean, I know it's really divisive. You have people that hate these, like, long-standing champs. Uh, like you know, you had Snoozeman uh, and Izzy. They have a lot of a lot of detractors, a lot of haters out there. Snoozeman. Their... <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, John! Oh my God, Johnny Dubs with the Snoozeman. That that I was agree with him. One day we're gonna. One where you too, Chris. Oh my was God. Against, was against. What did he, oh, you thought Jorge Masvidal and knocked him out. Yeah, that was not a snooze fest, but... Okay, okay. I'm going to have a long talk with you guys when we get out of here. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Your name is should never have been fighting for a belt, okay? Jesus. That was that was ridiculous. Uh, so, that, oh, basically, you, this is what I hear. This is all I hear. You basically downgrade every accomplishment and give an excuse, and then every... Uh, victory is basically a deserved, a loss is deserved. It. That's a deserved loss. Like it's interesting. How, how do you be, how do you paint a champion? How do you become a champion? Uh, like Alex Piera by absolutely mauling the uh, champ. Hey man, uh, 
I wouldn't call him. Interesting. Like, it's very interesting because, like, he that that same champ absolutely mauled multiple opponents that were uh, on the way to become champion. No respect for that guy. If he had a uh, time left, he would have won off the judges' scorecards. I well, well, that's what was great about last year. We had three fights where the champions lost, and it was all in the fifth round, and they were all winning on the scorecards. Oh, you talking about uh, Glover, Usman, and Stylebender, right? Talking about those yeah. three? Yeah. Yeah. I, that, mm. that was like yeah. an incredible series of events. Okay. Um, Let's stay on topic, I, though. Light heavyweights. You you, you guy talking about snoozeman and stuff. You slick guy. That was like some uh, salty Kobe Covington fans to me. John is a Chael Sonnen fan. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, he likes Chael. <laughs> hey, I like Chael, though. I like Chael. I like Chael. The undefeated, like Chael. undisputed champion. If he were to return, he would beat Jamal Hill and become the <laughs> oldest white heavyweight UFC sense. champion. This, this all makes sense now. now I, Dude, he never like, lost is, a round. First, I was like, okay, this is have to be uh, this guy must be drunk. Now it just makes sense. Okay, they spewing nonsense because he's a Chael fan. This is awesome. No, no, John, right, continue, John knows continue, what he's talking continue, about. Continue. John's just a little crazy sometimes. Continue. But I got this question for you, John. I got this one for you. Who's next champion at light heavyweight? Okay. Uh, that, again, we I, I I can't tell you who the next. Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen is the next champion at light heavyweight. <laughs> No, 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 no. Why are you asking silly questions? Serious. No, no, serious, 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 serious. You guys right think now, Anthony Smith is going to get the next crack at it? Why don't you get the guy who's undefeated? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, my God. He hasn't lost a fight all around. All right. This is weird. This is politics. You make it to UFT politics. Stop it. Stop he's it. He's undefeated. <laughs> is, is. You know what? Who's going to be the next light heavyweight champion? Never mind. Go ahead. So are, are they going to bring in Smith, do you think? Because he was going to fight him all hill. Hold on, hold on, that, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Do you think that's going to happen? You you were breaking up just now. What did you say, Perry? Yeah. No, I was saying, so are they going to bring Smith in? Uh, because he is supposed to fight Hill, but that whole thing got rearranged. Well, or he doesn't have gonna... a fight coming up anymore because you know how they were supposed to fight. So I imagine... Oh, yeah. Uh, what month do we in January, end of January? I want to say maybe May or June, July, maybe. So, Unless are they Anthony Smith that, takes or, a fight beforehand. Or are they going to have the Uncle I of Jean in the mix? Because, you know, at least Uncle I of could make the, like, he could bound that, beat that drum and, and argue for him, you know, deserving a title shot because he was robbed, quote unquote. You know what I mean? Um, that could be a thing because Smith wasn't really put, like that wasn't even a uh, title fight contention, right? He was that was like on his road. So does he deserve that title shot? Yes, no. Um, and so if Poton knocks out Izzy or just beats Izzy, or even if he loses to Izzy, uh, is he going to move up and go for a title shot? And will uh, will the UFC oblige? Him, of course, they will. You know, they love the double champ stuff. But so I think all these factors are going to be playing at it. Um, but I do see Alex Pierre being the light heavyweight champ within a year or two. Uh, hey, um, hold, hold on. What's what's his uh? What you call him? Who? Pereira. Powhatan. Powhatan. Oh, yo, I I ain't even trying to be funny. I, I, I swear to you, I thought you said tampon. <laughs> oh. I was like, I was confused. I was like, hold on, who? Oh, a 10, man. Oh, oh, who are you talking oh, about, on. man? I'm like, who? Poton, uh, Poton. Stone Hands. Oh, the, uh, yeah, that's, that's his tribe, right? That's what they're like, that thing, right? No, no, that, that, that's his nickname. His, uh, that's his nickname, is Stone Hands. And that's what... um. When Glover was yeah, but can you time. can you think of any other fighter that has their own emoji? Remember those Easter Island heads, the Easter Island, the big heads, yeah, Easter yeah, Island heads. And Alex Pereira, like every time they talk about him, they put the Easter Island head on there. 
Man, that dude's big. <laughs> has like, an emoji. But yeah, what we were talking about this earlier. Are. We were talking about this earlier. The whole he said to uh, Jamal Hill and them, right? Knock me out. How about you knock me out? What What is this, Rocky? You know what I'm saying? What is this? What is this, Rocky? He's just salty because he's salty because his homie got clapped up. I know, just like Apollo and Rocky when the Russian destroyed Apollo. Same thing. Hey, man, listen. If 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 Alex Pereira was about that life, he wouldn't kill himself to drop down to 205. You mean 185? Oh, 185. Yeah, 185. If he was if he was about, if he was a killer like he says he is, he wouldn't lose weight to fight smaller guys. No, he the only reason he's doing that was to go after Izzy. If I want to cut off my legs and fight a third grader, that doesn't make me a badass. That doesn't mean I can beat third graders. I mean, he was a yeah, but with one leg. I gotta give it some. Vegas won't book the fight if I have both legs. Hey, question. What, it wouldn't Did, be uh, Anthony Smith Speaking of losing Glover? both legs. Okay. Oh, I, I, got a, I got a question, though. So how do you feel no, about No, they fought the already, and Glover dominated him, Glover right? beat Smith, right? Glover beat Anthony Smith, right? Oh, knocked out his teeth, bro. Knocked them out. That was the fight Ooh, where Anthony different. Smith had to collect his teeth from the uh, ground? Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay, Okay. I remember that one. Okay, so since then, he's fought Rakic and lost to Rakic's decision. I think that fight was boring, wasn't it? Yeah, that was yeah. a snooze. That was a snooze fest. Okay, and then after that, Anthony Smith won a, won a three fight win streak. Then he lost to Ankalaev. How did he lose to Ankalaev? I don't remember that oh, fight. He, he got he, he got beat. He got beat badly. Because it says second badly. round KO TKO. It was yeah. It was a, he's got punished. Uh, lay and pray. It a, a, no, it wasn't. Wow. It was, like that's not to me. That's not to me. That's not laying. He was he was oh, controlled no, it was an and beat down. Are you are you talking about Smith? Smith got injured. Remember? Oh, was like, that the leg injury they had? Was that the leg or the yeah, ankle yeah. or something? Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Something happened. Yeah. See, they they oh, have it marked as KO TKO. So it was it was a, it was a KO. Have you Doctor you, stop it. Yeah, TKO. So like, look, right, at, you look at the light, look at the light heavyweight division. <laughs> right? look, we, I'm looking at the rankings right now, and in the top fifteen, uh, Dustin Jacoby. Leo Roundtree, Jimmy Crute, Dominic Reyes, Paul Craig, Ryan Spann, Oaken Uzdemir, Johnny Walker, Nikita Krylov, Anthony Smith, the retired Glover Teixeira, and, and Alexander Rakic injured, Jan Bohovic nowhere to be found. Uh, Magomed Akalaev is somewhere in the mountains of Russia, like crying about the <laughs> U.S. politics, and then Yuri Prohoshka has a show to So who's, who, who we got, who's fighting for this title next? Yuri's call coming. me crazy. Yuri's call coming. me crazy. Call me crazy. But Ryan Span versus Jamal Hill. Woo! I think, I think Ryan Spann. Call matchup. me crazy. That's a spicy but, matchup. I like that one. Hold on, wait, wait. Before we, before we <laughs> book that one, Ryan Span has a matchup already. Yeah, he's fighting. Does he? Who's he fighting? Krylov, right? Is he fighting Krylov? He. Oh, he is fighting Krylov. Yeah. February twenty fifth. Yeah. Well, that's that's actually a pretty quick turnaround for him. What do you mean? That's because he fought Reyes in November, and then he's fighting Krylov, and guaranteed he didn't take any damage. That's right, right. At all. Yeah, what yeah, damage yeah, did he, he take? Yeah, he bodied uh, Reyes. That was a quick fight. But Anthony Smith beat the brakes off of Span. That's why I'm saying you can't do the math. Like you can't go, this guy beat this guy. So it's just it's every single fight is a different matchup. It's a carousel of the title, I'm telling you. This yeah, is going to be just like I mean, before. So, the thing with MMA math, it might not always work out, but it's fun for theory crafting, right? And and just, like, the imagining. Because, of, of course, anyone has a chance of beating anyone else. Like, the, the, the puncher's chance, right? Like, Leon Edwards, everyone counted him out until that, that one perfectly head kick. So, like... We know that happens, but you can say this guy does have this these strong advantages. Like he's good at the takedowns, he's good at uh, you know finding the head, whatever, you know. So I, I don't want to say that MMA math is is completely useless and all that, but it, it, it's not to be taken as gospel. I'm just saying it's useless in is in regards to predicting the future. And you can look back at the past and say, okay, in the past I see these traits, but you can't predict anything off that uh you can you can because one two, two things one the, the each 
one, the guy that you're predicting for can get worse. They can like fall off, like you said. They can lose motivation, lose hunger. Um, they can become champion, get a little bit softer, start celebrating more, partying more. And the guys that are beneath them who lost the fight, they can become more hungry, get better skills in the gym, you know, improve. So even though um, you can go, okay, this fighter X beat fighter Y, and fighter Y lost to fighter Z. So then that makes sense that fighter X would lose to fighter Z, but it, it doesn't really equate that way. Like, because the, the, the biggest factors is those guys matching up. So, so what version, and what version of those guys are we going to get? Yeah. So I, I think that we is very much going to be a round robin. Like we're not going to see. I don't. I don't see anyone in the light heavyweight division being a dominant champion. Like none of them have that that pure dominance that you know all the other great dominant champions have. You know, there's no. I, I, I agree with that. I agree with you, John. I agree with you in that in that it might be a round robin in uh, this division, and it's not because of uh, any of the guys that are fighting being like like lacking something. I think it's just really really difficult to be a dominant champion. Like it's the guys that the guys that we we mentioned. I mentioned earlier. I mentioned three names. One three. The one thing that those guys have in common are they're special. They're just special. They're, there's got, there's not a lot of guys like those men. Like, that's why they had those long lanes. It's not because the fighters now um, are missing something. And if it is, they're, if, they're, if they're missing that something, that whatever that it is, those three guys had it. That's why they were oh. long lane champions. Not because of the divisional makeup. It's uh, it's very, that, that, that it factor or whatever. Um, I, I remember watching a Strickland interview recently, and he was talking about how he gets asked why there aren't uh, many American champions. And, you know, his response is, you know, the older American champs from the old days, they, they had a lot of heart and a lot of grit and all that, but they didn't have the technical skills and the uh, all that. But now you have all these guys that are really well, like, running circles around them and all these other aspects of the, the game, but they don't have that tenacity. And that's why you have guys from Dagestan and Brazil and these other hard, harder places, like, like they have that that grit in them. And that's why you're seeing all these. Oh, yeah. John, 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 a long time ago, we did talk about uh, the American champions and how compared to the other countries for their champions, they're welcome home with parades and parties and celebrations compared to America where it's more like your, your hometown and that's it. It's not the whole damn country cheering for you. Right yeah, guys. Right. You guys know what I'm talking about. We well, we yeah, talked no, about no, this before. Well, yeah. well, think about it. Look at look at the support. Look at the, look at how much support you get as an American. Well, we, right now, we have one American champion, right? Well, two American champions. Two. If you if you count um the asterisk laden ja- Jamal Hill, but like if you, and Al Jermaine, yeah. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, that's, 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 the, that's the two. Al Jermaine and uh and and for the longest, uh, Al Jermaine was getting oh. dumped on. For his uh, Oscar well, performance, he still like he doesn't get like the whole country, the entire country of the uh, of the U.S. isn't behind Jamal Hill as like how the entire um, country's behind Connor. And uh, when or, you, or if you go to India, right? Like the, no one in 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 the U.S. They don't, the U.S. only cares about football, basketball, and baseball. They don't really care that much about. Like sports, it's only in small pockets in a country, not the entire country. No one's galvanized by the UFC in a unified way. You might have small pockets across the country, but not the entire country. The only time the entire country's interested in fight sports is in heavyweight boxing. Well, uh, you, you, I would say that the Connor fever and the Ronda fever, like, you know, that that drummed up a lot of interest. Like that was that was in the cultural zeitgeist. You had people talking about it that had never watched it, and that were buying pay per views and going to the bars to see those fights because uh, that's the it thing. Um, no, uh, oh. you, you're right. They, they I, I will say that Conor Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey did wonders for the sport of MMA, but bringing it to the forefront of the like cultural zeitgeist, as you say, you're, you're right about that. However. 
they're not at all mainstream. Like you're talking about million, like maybe um, a big pay per view for UFC is what um, nationally. What's a big pay per view? Connor, Connor. Oh, you talking about numbers? Yeah, yeah like buys. millions. I mean, of them. Doesn't Connor hold the record still? Still does, yeah. Like top three, if I'm not. Yeah, but what, what what are these actual numbers? Like, what's the um a, a, a great pay per view event? Uh. <clears throat> That's where Google plays a huge part in stats. Yeah. So while we smoke on that and think about that, you if you watch viewership and you consider um like a big event, right? The UFC has a one huge event. Let's say they're, they're the biggest card of the year. If you compare that to the Super Bowl, it's like it's a joke. Exactly. Like no one, like, nationally, everyone cares about the Super Bowl. Even if you don't like football, you go into somebody's football Super Bowl party just to eat wings and talk have, and drink beer with your friends. Girls are going just to uh, have somebody to have little gossip corners and talk about the outfits they're wearing and who's got new shoes and who's no. boyfriend. Um, no, when you go to when it's, when football in the U.S. compared to anything else as far as the sports concerned, it's, it's like a. Uh, Back burner background noise at best, and the UFC is even more niche than that because some markets don't even don't even consider it a real sport. So here are some stats for you: the highest uh, pay per view, Conor Khabib, two point four million. Uh, next one is Poirier McGregor two, or uh, Poirier McGregor three is at one point eight. Two is at uh, or two is at one point six. Uh, Diaz McGregor 2, 1.6. Uh, McGregor Cowboy 1.3. Holy shit. Um, Connor's the man? The worst. Yeah. <laughs> Connor's so, the man, dude. It, well, yeah, that's, that's about, he's, he's, he's biggest illustrating. Gate, biggest gate, number one is Alvarez McGregor at 17.7 million. Uh, second is Khabib McGregor at 17.2. Hey, John, look this up real quick. But number four, and this is this is one that I, I, I knew before this, but uh, it's Pierre versus Shields at twelve million dollars. That was the number one biggest gate for the longest time, and that is because the entire country rallied around DSP. Where was it at? In Canada? Yeah, it was the first Toronto? ever. Uh, yep, the first ever. Hey, uh, look this up. I, I'm just curious. Look look up um, Mayweather versus Pacquiao. I want to know how oh, many pay per view guys. Oh, ahead of you already. Uh, Four point six million. Almost triple. Well, let me let me ask you something. What do you think the fifth uh, highest gate uh, in the UFC is? It's something within the this decade. <laughs> Don't tell me it's Chael Sonnen. Don't tell me it's Chael Sonnen. <laughs> when you say this decade, like twenty twenty. Yeah, 2020s. Jacksonville. Okay. What fight? What, 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 what fight do you think it was? A- any card in Jacksonville. Uh, no, no, no. It's got to be the... Um... Oh, no. Piera versus Izzy. Oh, yeah. Was that New York? 11.5. 11. 11. Yep. New York? Well, shit. New York costs... Yeah. It costs like... $10 to just get like a bottle of water. Well, what's Shit. crazy is some of these numbers uh, adjusted for inflation. Like the uh, Alvarez McGregor is like $22 million. But what? And this, here's, here's the thing, like, comparing the sports, right? Look at um, boxing, comparatively speaking. Oil Mayweather versus Manny, pa- Manny Pacquiao was $4.6 million pay-per-view wise. Um... Mayweather versus Canelo was 2.2 million. Mayweather versus De La Hoya was 2.4. Tyson versus Lennox Lewis is 1.9. Tyson versus Holyfield was 1.9. And this is in the 90s. That's what I mean by like the country. The country doesn't really care that much about uh, as a whole. Like in pockets, yes, the country cares, but as a whole, the country doesn't really give a shit about MMA yet. Yeah. So I, I, gotta, I gotta say, you know, boxing has had uh, 150 years of. You know, time to develop at MMA and UFC has only got 30 years. Is that? Oh, we're at 30, right? UFC's 30 yeah. this year? Also, 
MMA benefits heavily from social media. Boxing only has social media. They got social media at the same time. So as far as um, viewership and um, exposure is concerned, if you have a product, it will get exposed. A, 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 um, a viable product. It's not the world's hit. It's hidden from the world. You can see it if you want to. You just don't want so, to. The thing with boxing, though, is it, it is declining in popularity and all that. And that, you know, head, head, it, it's very um, all the corruption and the fight fixing and all that. Like a lot of people are not into boxing as much, and we all know all the the dirtiness that goes up along with it. And that's something I'm really concerned about uh, MMA falling into, especially with this last. It's already uh, here. Yeah, yeah, we had this whole like uh, scandal and everything. Yeah. What's well, already exactly. here? Well, if all, all, the, all the athletic commissions are boxing athletic commissions. The, the, it, it, it doesn't have its own commission. Yeah, and that's something. Uh, Do they all fall under the same commission though? Because to be fair, like even the slap I think league is underneath those same commissions too, which is crazy, right? Yeah. Well, so here's something that uh, a lot of people didn't know is that there was a um, like like there's for boxing, there was one for wrestling because. People still believe prof- uh, professional wrestling was real, and they had their own commissions up until the eighties. And then once it started, like the key base, a lot of these states got rid of that, that commission. But there are a few states that still have it, and I, I think that that precedent should be used to make uh, MMA uh, commissions in all these states. You know what they Especially need to do here? Model. It's mainly in America. <laughs> The commissions, they, they basically govern the uh, judges, right? But in 1FC over in Singapore, they have a judging criteria already established. And I think it's way better than what we have here in America with the UFC and Bellator and PFL and all the other organizations that we got, all the promotions that we got MMA-wise here in America. It's because they're using the wrong type of judges. They need to have a specific type of judge. They're using boxing judges. Literally. And they're using uh, the boxing scoring. The ten must system is ridiculous for MMA. Yep. But yeah, yeah be, that's, MMA should definitely adopt their own rules and adopt their own scoring. And that's I think that's one of the reasons why it's not considered a real sport. Most people still view MMA as like human cockfighting. If you if you go around and try to show people MMA, this is coming from a guy who's a huge MMA fan. I love MMA. I've always, I always um, watched it since the '90s, um, from Pride to early days of the UFC. When I try to show people or expose people to mixed martial arts, I have no clue about it. They look at it like it's, uh, I'd say, human cockfighting. They don't see the skill. They don't see um, the technique. They just see two guys beating the shit out of each other with very few rules. Right. Well, uh, or or they think the. Why aren't they doing anything when they're on the ground grappling? Yeah, it, it the boring part. But, right? yeah, that that part even extends to some of the fan base. This the fan, most of the fan, some of the fan base doesn't they have are clueless when uh, fights into grappling exchanges. They go, it's boring or that's laying prey. They don't they don't see it as this, that other guy doesn't want to be there. It's like you don't want to get punched in the face. You don't want another guy holding you down either. So if that guy is able to hold you down against your will, who do we give the credit to? Well, also at the same time, like that same guy that's holding you down, like it's like you are um, you're losing energy too when you're trying to fight him at the same time just so you don't get compromised. Right. So there's that, you know, taken into effect. Right, the credit has to go to somebody. So if, if, if I don't want to be held down, but the if, if you want to, if you want to hold me down, then if I can't do anything about it, you're dominating me, right? Well, not yes and no. I mean, there is... Well, wait, wait, it can't be yes there, there, or no. It can't be yes or no. Like, okay, let's say, for instance, um, you have a shiny toy, right? And you want to play with it. But I also want to play with it. If I take your toy and you can't do anything about it, isn't that me dominating you? No. Not no? necessarily. No? Not it's necessarily? about domination. So, well, I mean, well, what I'm saying is, if, from a wrestling standpoint, from a fight standpoint, from, from, wait, from a fight standpoint, if two guys yeah. are bo- if, two, if two guys are just boxing, right? Their their whole goal is to hit and not get hit, right? 
Yeah. Under those simple two rules, when you add mixed martial arts in it, when you add in grappling, then you you add in these other elements that we just said need to be accounted for in in the scoring. If one guy is a dominant grappler, but the other guy is a dominant striker, uh, the dominant striker will be imposing his will, aka dominating the grappler if he's able to just keep the fight standing and keep the fight in his wheelhouse, keep it a kickboxing. Oh. Match. So he'll be, so, he'll be dominating. He'll be dominating that grappler if he does that, right? You said Connor was dominating Khabib when they were standing. No, that's not what I said. I didn't say that at all. I said my my question was if a dominant striker is piecing up a wrestler on, in a stand up, keeping him, uh, keeping the fight away from um, grappling, keeping it in the center of the octagon, and landing um, significant strikes in the middle, not getting taken down, he's dominating that grappler. Right or wrong? I, I wouldn't say dominating. So when you say it, dominating, it, it, it implies a level of skill differential and like oh, they're yeah. winning, they're they're beating them. But I like dominating is something a, a higher level than just you know. Right, let's let's hold up. For, for, like, for sake if you say, of, uh, hold on, wait, give me a second. For sake of um, argument, let's just say. You got one guy who's a pure striker, right? Let's give an example, like a guy like, um, say, Izzy. But this is not a matchup because I'm just giving examples. You have a guy like Izzy who's a pure striker against a guy like, uh, say, Damian Maya who's a pure grappler. If Damian Maya fights Izzy and Izzy kickboxes him for five straight rounds, it goes to decision. Would you, would you not say that was a dominant striking performance by Izzy? It, it would depend on his performance. Like, is so, I mean, I mean we're, we're implying that he is, he, is, is he just is he just beating him? It, can Maya not counter at all? Is my, like yes, that? Yeah. It, he's just, it, he's just, he is just a kickbox. He is just a punching bag for five rounds. Yeah, well, Ramley. Ramley. Okay, and on on the flip side of that, if if Damian Maya is completely ragdolling, is he taking him down at will for a five round straight? Is he not then being dominant? Yes. That's all that I'm saying when it comes to grapplers um, in the sport. They don't get as much credit because the average fan, when they see a person engaging in grappling, they just say, oh, man, he's laying and praying, or he's boring, or he's um, not exciting um, because they don't see the ready action. You can see punches. You can understand that easier because it's like that guy's yeah. trying to punch me. You can see a swing and a miss from a mile away. You can see when a guy connects a mile away. You can anyone can see that, but it's a little bit di more difficult to understand a guy, you know, trying to fight off a single or trying to um, get out from underneath opposition. Well, there, there's like a, a difference between like when at least when I say they're laying and praying that that, that implies that they really are aren't trying to move the position forward, right? Like if you're on the ground, if you're moving moving forward, trying to get a better position, trying to move like enact your game plan, that's, that, I love that. Uh, I used to wrestle in co uh, high school, uh, and I did a little bit in college, so, like, I, I, I am, I love that stuff. But, when you are just sort of just holding them down, trying to catch your breath, or just trying to win on the card, or, or win points, or whatever, like, that's, if you're not trying to actively push it forward, and, like, there's reasonable, um, point to be made of making them stand up like the rest standing them up because like there's nothing happening or very little actually progressing in the fight that's what i say lane right um and that some fighters do that but you know people will will, will uh, say stuff about um islam and khabib but they're, they're always pushing forward you know they're always enacting their game plan as opposed to uh uncle Ayaz in that fourth round he really wasn't trying to move that position forward. He was just on top of Jan. Um, and he only started do really doing anything in that fifth round. That was like towards the latter half. So I would say he was laying and praying for a good portion of that. But then he yeah, started... Because, well, well, doesn't um, control time come into play as well? Like, it, it doesn't that factor into scoring? If you're scoring mixed yeah. martial arts. It's the rule uh, sets. Like, if we had the 1FC rules with yellow cards and whatnot, 
things would be totally different here. I feel that's just my opinion. Right. right. Well, I think I think the rules the rules kind of cater to grapplers anyway. Oh, like, UFC you rules you, you absolutely. Yeah, like you can't you can't, you, you, can't you, you can't do a lot of ground striking. There's not a lot of uh, right. ground striking allowed or anti ground striking allowed. So I say, like if you if a guy um has one hand on a mat, you can't knee him in the head. And, it's two right. now, right? It's two now, right? Or is it still one? It depends on the state. Are you serious? State, but for, for, it depends. Yeah, it, it depends. State by state, yeah. It depends if the but, state but adopted part, unified part, rules, you right? Can't, you can't well, there's there's three sets of rules now, three sets of unified. So, but with that being said, it's still the same thing. Like you can't knee a grounded opponent, and a, it's not like this guy got knocked to the ground and now he's trying to recover. It's more like they're going to the ground in order to engage grappling. So if you can't stop a guy from engaging in grappling by um, deterring him with knees, then you're catering to the grappler, in my opinion. So I think that some of the rules do already uh, care toward that. Now, I agree with you, John. I, I think that if you're not advancing position, if you're not going for ground and pound or submissions with your grappling, then you are laying and praying. I agree with you there. Um, however, I think when it comes to scoring, there has to be a way to give credit to the grappling exchanges because sometimes in grappling exchanges, nothing happening is a big deal. Right. And it's there, you're preventing them from moving. Forward. And I, I do agree. And I, I think I have to look at the rule set exactly, but like I know the control time factors in, but I think it's like a weighted system. Like they, they weight the how much control time factors in versus damage versus all that. And the sad yeah. thing is, all these judges, they don't know what they're watching, and they don't understand the nuance. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Do you think like, maybe there needs to be new rules that are incorporated inside of, like, MMA judging? Like, maybe they need to have a certain standard versus just using boxing and, like, combat sports Absolutely. stuff, you know? Right. Absolutely. Like, it, it, it needs to be no, revamped. The, the well, sport yeah, needs to be revamped. Yeah. The criteria needs to be revamped. The judges themselves need to be revamped, or they need to be educated. Um, I really think they you need a, a at least one. Like you know, they make they make the refs go to school and learn everything. Like they need to do that with judges, but that's not the case. Like no, the judges don't have to get, learn anything. They they're just picked by the uh, commission. But like they you have to go through a lot of certification to be a uh, uh, a ref, though. <laughs> uh, tell that to the uh, Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, Fuck, right? I, you, you're right. Listen, when, when it comes to like the sport itself, it it, do, it can it will benefit greatly from having a specified open scoring system where everyone knows what's going on, where you don't have to worry about being at the whim of whatever commission and whatever state. You're currently competing in everyone every single referee understands what a darge choke is every single re um um judge understands what side control is every single judge understands what um a leg kick is and they're not screaming out that's a leg kick to the head we we gotta yeah. we we have to you know we, we it, it would be um it would help the sport of mma grow if the rules were if the scoring was much more transparent, and now we don't have that. We have we have very very little transparency. All we do know is effective striking, damage, octagon control, and control time. All those things are weighted, but we don't know how much. Right. Well, and we. Well, I think damage just recently got like into the scoring. Like they didn't like calculate damage before, right? Like it wasn't until this past year where they're like, all right, let's. Damage plays a factor into everything. It should. It well, should. It's, a, it's a fight. They, so it should, it should play a very – it should play a, a vital role. If, if you control I, me on – if let's just say there's a fight, right, a, a three-round fight, and for two rounds, you completely ground, ground, ground a fighter, right? Fighter X completely dominates fighter Y in the ground game but does no damage or advances position very little, attempts no subs. All he does – Shoot a double, hold his opponent on the ground for two rounds. But in round three, fighter Y completely rolls over 
Fighter X with strikes I mean, and just bludgeons him, beats him, bloodies him up, busts his lip, busts his eye, has him leaking from his head, bruises his ribs, peppers his legs up to where he looked like um, a pork shoulder. That should count way more than the ground control, in my opinion, because it's a fight. One FC rules would let that fighter in the third round win. He should. Actually, the first round, there wouldn't be... They would get yellow cards, or one of them would get a yellow card. Well, literally, so, for that lay and pray and nothing, no action. What? So what was very interesting is the the Rose versus Carla fight, that atrocious abomination. Oh, what God. they how the, judges, how the judges had to uh, score that? Like they had to go down an entire list of oh ring control, like whether or not how like that's one of the major factors of why they scored it the way they did. Um, so, I, I just think that we need to get rid of the point system, or not the point system, the, uh, the scoring by rounds, because you have... Do you want to do open scoring? Is that, like, you think open scoring is the best way to go it? Like, oh, I'm down... Yes. In, like, you know, what 18, know? 20 or whatever. It, you know? Yes, really. yeah. No, no, there shouldn't be scores for the rounds. It should be a should be open. fight. The fight overall is judged. It shouldn't be, uh, oh, you got, you won this round, you won that round, you won this round, you won the fight. No, it should be, did you, like, the whole fight should be judged as a whole. Because point fight, I hate point fighters, right? Like, they bank the first three rounds, they know they won it, and they just coast. Like, that's awful. Like, that's just... We need to get that out of the sport. So the I think one FC they do the entire fight is judged as one. Yeah, you can you can definitely you can definitely um, motivate fighters to keep to continue with the with the yellow cards, and you can even determine even further by docking points for stalling. So like if you if, you, if you're ahead on points by let's say for instance every. Um, clean shot landed gave you one point. And every time you took someone down, it gave you a point. Every time you changed position, it gave you a point. And you're looking at a score, it's like 37 to, 20, 37 to 26 in the first round, right? And by the end of the round, like, by the end of the um, round, you go, okay, Fighter X is up. You know, fighter X has 37 points and Fighter um, Y has 28 points. So Fighter X won round one. You can also deduct points from for fouls and for for every foul, not just by not giving any warnings. They're professionals. If you don't know the rules, get out of the sport. Anytime you grab the fence, anytime you eye poke, anytime you um, kick someone in the balls, you get no warnings. It's automatic point loss. And you can have deductions. Right. If you had open scoring, I think that would be – it will make the sport uh, even more play, playable for guys who don't understand it. They're like, okay, well, why did that guy score? All he did was – um, move his legs around, and then you, someone can easily explain. Well, he he, cha- he advanced to mount, so that gave him three points. And if you had an open scoring system where every single time, like live, the points were updated, the same as in basketball, where you drain that three pointer. Like after every points, round and shit. You know what, as as no for the fight as a whole, like not every like every round, not scoring for every round, but like say you fight a three round fight, at the end of the fight, who has the most points? That's the winner. Right. Damn. So you think it's like real live? Like, like if like if someone hits like a good left jab or something, or left hook, like a haymaker, it's like like a three point. Well, yeah, I'm saying like uh, of course you can adjust it for I, a, a, you, you can you can have a minor strike and a significant strike because sometimes like you mean if you just land a jab, that's a that is a, a strike landed. You can get knocked out by right. it. Of course. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, it's good point. It's not. It's not, right it's now, not as. No, wait, you can land a jab, and you can be knocked out by a jab. But it's not as significant as, say, an overhand right. Or well, we have, like, the, the scorecards that, you know, drop every so often for fights, and it's really, like, esoteric. There's not a lot of, like, understanding. So I think that would be very helpful. Um, and this is one of the reasons I hate the 10-9 the must system is point deductions are so, like, drastic, right? It's severe. It's like, severe, yeah. And so that, like... That, that essentially makes it so you can foul as much as you want, as long as it's not intentional. Like, everyone gets a few, like, you get a free groin shot, you get a free eye poke, you get a free fence grab, you get a free hand in the glove, and nope, nothing happens, right? 
Hell, uh, what, that that one fight where they threw a punch after the bell ring, they didn't did the duck points. Um, I can't remember the, the female fighter, right? Like, so Jermaine, uh, Holly Holm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that's just um, it, it's ridiculous. So I think they need we need to change the the the, the if nothing else, just like get rid of the ten nine system. How long have we so been we talking actually, about this? The judges, the judges, the judges. We've been trying to, on this pod alone. We've brung up, we've we talked about rule change probably seven or eight episodes. Never leave it in the hands of the judges. That's s- silly. That's your only defense is to uh, silly. Uh, leave it up to you another guy. Silly. Leave you another guy, man. Silly. All right, so that takes away from the sport. Like that doesn't mean it's a sport then if you're saying that, right? That's, that, that's, what, yeah. that's the point. That's the point I was trying to make earlier. I remember one episode we talked about my my point of making the fifth round or third round untimed. And that, that's what makes it not a sport because if you, if you if you have guys that game the clock and guys that game the point system, they can't game the clock and game the point system when it's untimed. When it's just going to determine who's a winner in this matchup. But like you said, that takes it away from it being a sport because it changes the parameters. Now, if you have open scoring and you list out exactly what's like, this equals one point, this equals three points, this equals five points, and you have it labeled labeled out and defined specifically what to how it, you can earn a score and what can be done to subtract from a score. If you have it defined and have it open, then it makes it even more of a sport. And I agree with John to a degree. And I'm not really a huge fan of guys who point fight. However, it is a sport and it is a game. It's not life or death. So you have I, I do get that some guys are warriors, guys like Diego Sanchez, they're not point fighters. They're just coming out there to lay it all on the line. Maybe right. win, maybe lose, but you're gonna get the best of them every time. Whereas other guys might come in and be more gamely of the system and you know, just try to rack up points and they're playing a video hey. game. They're playing. A, they, it's, it's, they're not treating it as if it's a, a fight. They're treating it as if it's a sport. Right, yeah. and I I understand it conceptually, right? I, I I like you're trying to maximize your gain for minimal uh, like damage, right? So I, I I respect that on one level, but as a fan and someone paying money to watch this, it pisses me off. Like, because also like a, a fighter is not a fighter. Like they're an entertainer. And that's what a lot of them fail to understand. Like, especially the ones that talk about their money and not getting enough money. Chael Sonnen is a prime example of someone who got paid because he knew what business he was in. Um, Kobe Covington was going to get cut. We all know this. But then he adopted that character, that persona, and propelled himself forward. Um, Conor McGregor, another prime example of someone who knows what business he's in. To get the big bucks, you have to be an entertainer. And I understand some guys don't want to lean, like, don't want to lean into the the character persona or whatever because they don't want to be too like WWE. They don't want to be like that. But that's what makes money. That's what sells yourself. Um, and I don't say that every fighter has to do that. Like some guys, like Sean Strickland, have built a brand. By being authentic and being themselves. He just doesn't give a fuck. He'll say whatever he wants. And whatever's on his mind. Uh, or Piera. Very stoic, quiet guy. But he's built this, uh, this mystique about him. Uh, he posts those like, Instagram videos of him shooting a uh, soccer ball with an arrow. So like, every guy has their own way of promoting themselves. And some of these guys that complain about the lack of money aren't promoting themselves because they, they, they don't understand the business there. All right, before we get into our next segment or segment, segment, <laughs> next segment, I just want to make a small announcement and an apology. I was going to keep up with the Power Slap League and I've decided to not continue going forward with the... Why? Why would you keep up with it? I'm sorry. Why would I not, or why would I? Why would you keep up with it? Why would you? I, I thought it could have been something, but all it is is uh, 
bunch of guys just giving each other CTE. So it's not for me. It's like they're trying to take the ultimate fighter formula and apply it to dudes that I'm not going to say they're not athletes, but when you're just slapping somebody that's holding a pole behind their back and they can't defend themselves, it's, I think it's more of like their personalities. Like they, they have, a personality with them, but they got personalities. Slap Jesus, that's my winner. That's what. Oh, no, dude, that's the boy, man. And I, uh, but I, I just, it's not for me. I can't, I can't, I can't follow it. I just can't. It's something that you just watch on like social media. You get a few laughs in. Hey, send it to a friend or two. But, hey, check this out, man. This dude got slapped so hard he <laughs> he saw demons or something. You know, it's like I can't do it. Yeah, I this girl it. got slapped so hard she somersaulted off of her shoes. Yeah, she something. almost did a uh, head spin. Like I saw that. <laughs> I mean, I I do appreciate Dana. You know, uh, promoting the slap fight with his wife. Very good job, Dana. D- hey, that's the conspiracy, right? This man was going to promote slap fighting by slapping his wife. <laughs> oh, man. But it is what it is. I will not, uh, I will not be keeping up with the Power Slap League. I will just check in here and there to see who won. See if Slap Jesus continued on in the uh, competition. But get, getting paid only 2K and 2K to win. <laughs> you I mean, all they're doing is, bro, they're just slapping each other, man. It's, it's, it's goofy. It, yeah, but it's, it's, if you don't go down with the first slap, then you're, you're asking to be a very non-intelligent individual by the time you're 50. Let's be yeah. fair. Let's be fair. We don't have uh, brain surgeons and like particle scientists going to the slap competition, so we'll be okay. <laughs> Man, what was the doctor? Guys, the, the, guys who, the guys who are competing. Hey, the guys who are competing in slap, um, the slap competition should be competing in the slap competition. Trust me. Yeah, I, I'm surprised Gaethje hasn't gone in there, given his love of getting brain damage. You know who's you know who did enter? Bigfoot Silva. What? What? And he's in, he's I think he just joined the heavyweight division. I saw a post with him showing his hand uh, and tagging like the the slap league or whatever. All right, so, okay. so the next segment that we're gonna go into, slap league is thrown out of here. What fights are you guys excited about that has just recently been announced? Fight announcement. Okay, yeah. I, I'm going to jump in real quick because I was excited for this fight in the beginning and the fight lived up to my hype. Uh, Usman versus Edwards 2. Or 3 now. Sorry, it'll be 3 now. I was excited for that fight to begin with because I thought Edwards was the second best uh 170 pound guy in a division and Usman was obviously the king but he for whatever reason uh Usman wasn't getting a lot of credit uh stateside but I thought skill wise just watching him in the cage watching him perform watching him um go on that long winning streak no one really gave him as much credit as I thought he deserved and I thought he was a dangerous matchup for Usman all the way up until I, I remember watching the fight live. All the way up until the fifth round, I was like, "Man, he's still dangerous." Like, cause it's not like um, he's running away with Usman's running away with this fight. Leon's still dangerous. Um, I'm excited for that again. I want to see that fight again. It's, I think it's going to be in London this time. Yeah. So we got this fight in Leon's backyard. I still think that Usman is the best 170 pounder on the planet. I think Usman and I think Leon's second best. But I'm I'm curious to see how Usman comes back after getting beat and getting knocked out. This is going to be interesting interesting to see because this is his first what um, KO loss, right? He had a submission yeah. loss before. This is his first KO loss. It's going to be interesting to see how Usman comes back from being knocked out. Is he a different fighter? Is he more safe? Is he more 
um, conservative now? Like, who knows? Like, w- w- is he more wild now and going for the finish? Who knows? I'm excited to see that fight and that outcome. I, I think that it heavily favors uh, Leon because it is in his backyard. Usman did get that brutal KO, and that does affect the fighter, like, substantially. Uh, and a lot of people are um, sleeping on this, but the fact that the fight was at super high elevation, and Usman trains at elevation, so he was well-adjusted. But if you look at that fight, every fighter on that card was gassed and winded by the second round, if not by the end of the first round. Like, look at... Rock yeah, Cold. look at the uh, Rock Cold versus Costa fight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoa. They, and, they, they and took Leon, breaks in the middle of the fight, dude. Yeah. Like, I saw both it, of them hands on knees. That was funny. It, that was a funny it, fight. It, it was, like... It was so heavily tilted in favor of Usman. So, it, it seems like the pendulum is swung. And I, I think Leon has the... Now he knows that he's the champ. Like, he is the man. He is the only man to humble Usman. Usman's got to know that that streak that he had, that, because, like, I remember that fight, the clips leading up to it, they had the vintage, uh, vin, uh, the nets or whatever. Usman was talking about how he's the great, or I wouldn't say I'm the GOAT, but, you know, other people might. Talking about comparing himself to GSP and Anderson Silva's streak and all that. All that's gone. And he'll never get that. He'll never be able to say he's better than this guy or that guy. Um, so, like, all that psychological has got to be weighing on him, right? So, I, I think Leon is the favorite. And I, I, I think everyone wants Leon to win. Or most people, from what I've seen. At least. I think the opposite might be true <clears throat> for Usman, though. I think the pressure might be off of his shoulders now. Because he went so long with being the champion and all these comparisons, the GSP and him being the greatest of all time, which has some validity. I mean, if he beats Leon, that would be – and maybe defends it a couple more times, he can break the record. He's close to it. So those things had some validity. But I think it, uh, on the flip side, he, he a lot of the pressure is off his shoulders now. Now he's only thinking about fighting – and winning, not keeping some legacy going or keeping some win streak going or trying to beat this uh, decorated champion. It's only fight and be champion or lose and be contender for so, um, like I, be I just wanna... for Kamaru Uzman. So there might be some pressure let off of his shoulders as opposed to like how it was going into that fight of trying to carry this legacy. Well, I wouldn't say he was like I think he was very egotistical and cocky, just like every the whole lead up to that. He thought he was the best fighter ever, right? And and just like he's saying, he's saying, "Oh, I'm not going to go up to 185 and challenge uh, Izzy. It's better that we have two Nigerian champions. I'm going to go up to 205 and fight for the belt." He he actually said that and thought he could compete at 205. Of course, well, here's the thing. I find it I find it kind of funny that you uh, you, you kind of paint uh, <laughs> Usman in a negative light for being cocky and egotistical when your favorite guy is Chino Sonnen, who's only good at being cocky and egotistical. He's no his fight skills doesn't warrant that, anything special. You know what I mean? It's like you, uh, which so which he, which he, you have to have character, right? You, that you is a character have, he plays. Right, but what I'm you have to, in order to sell, it's, it's, it's a sport. So in order to sell tickets, you have to have this air of cockiness. The guys who are humble and quiet, like Cody, are on a verge of getting cut. If you're humble, respectful, quiet, good boy, church boy, no, never say anything out of line, just fight, shut up, go home, never say how great you are, no one cares. It doesn't move the needle. Uh, well, I mean, Bob, Bobby Knuckles. He's a very he's, no, but he, but he's, he's a character though. He's not a humble church boy. He's he's just fighting go home. He talks uh, crazy. He talks crazy amounts of shit. Um, mighty mouse. He talks shit. Hey, hey. Hey. Wait, 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 you said Bobby Knuckles. I thought you said Bobby. Right. I um, said, I thought you said Bobby Green. You said Bobby Knuckles. Okay, you're right. I will say this. Um, he's definitely Bobby an exception. Green. He's definitely um. Robert Whitaker is definitely an exception, but he's not the rule. Um, 
Islam and Khabib, Islam. they were very respectful. Man, them fools right. can't speak English good. All right. You can't compare right. that. So, <laughs> No, no, right. no, 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 I'll, I'll give you credit. No, you're right. You, you did Volk, Volk's Volk very humble. Volk. All right, he'll talk right. his trash though. But I think. What's one of the I think that... I have the fight that no one's talking about. No one's talking about this fight, and it's kind of depressing. No one's talking about Tito Vera versus Corey Sanhagen. Banger. That's a banger. I like. I like, I like that matchup. Like. That like, fight's been yeah, announced but, though. But, We're but, talking but, about the but, recent yeah, announcements. Yeah, it's been announced, but. It, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. But still, I don't think it needs to be a UFC fight night. If anything, it should be like one of those fight nights hosted in somewhere else. It's a main event, besides right? Besides the Apex. It's a main event, right? Yeah, it's the main event. Yeah. It's but sad still, like, that's, Apex, that's not a fucking Apex fight, dude. Hell no. That's this like a Kino Orlando or Hagen, Arizona dude. type of uh, yes. fight night. Yeah, like Austin, Texas or some shit. Or you like know? the like, third it, fight on uh, a pay-per-view or something, right? Co-main event, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Like this deserves way more credit than it's not like getting shined upon. Because come on, man, that's that's got to be a number one contender fight, or even the main event of In, the prelims uh, the, or something. At yeah, I, uh, I I really want him to fight uh, O'Malley soon. Who? Sooner rather than later. Vera or Stan Hagen. Oh, uh, the winner of that. Dude, either one I, I like. Oh, okay. I like I like one of them piecing him up, honestly. I I, I would love to see. Oh, you, you, you think he's going to piece up? I, I think uh, Sanhagen or well, Cheeto already beat him, but Sanhagen. Okay, okay, I guess. I like who Sanhagen got, over uh, O'Malley. Aaron Sanhagen. Huh? Okay, but besides O'Malley, like, who do you have Sanhagen over Vera? Like, you think Vera? I guess you think Sanhagen. Oh, that fight! I don't know. That's going to be a good one. I can't call it. I can't call it. Well, San Higgins, I'm not saying Higgins, I'm sorry. San Higgins is very, very talented. He's definitely deserved to be top five in that division. We're talking about 135, correct? Yes. Yeah. We have a new addition to 135. Oh, you talking and about the uh, figgy? figgy? Yeah. He was in the figgy. That old, uh, said he's not going to cut weight anymore. He's, he's tired of like, what? waiting to get the hey, What you said, John? Either. Uh, Ra- Raul Rosa against uh, what we call it, Figgy. I would love that. No, I, I would uh, love watching Figgy destroy that that child. Moonface. I must say this a little bit early. For him, <laughs> you, you must not like Raul at all. Yeah. This, 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 this boy hates his face so bad. Oh, but I think it's like, that's, that's <laughs> such an early. His attempt to talk. His attempt so to talk shit. It was like so oh. Santa Claus is going to come down your chimney and bring you the 2000. That was it, it, just awful. Awful. So, as part of the. In the words, in the words of Bayou Bush, well, from like, like, a quote to quote, the water boy, that is not a beautiful man. <laughs> I am not a yeah. handsome man. He, uh, he, he, it is pleasing to look at. Uh, but, he can, but he can fight. He definitely can scrap and. Dude, that boy can, yeah, that that boy can wrestle. How old is he, like, he 17, 17 or 18? He's 18. He's 18 now. He just Not turned 18. If, if he can actually handle the fire, if he gets, like, I would like to see him be thrown to the wolves like John Jones, you know? Like, get an early title shot, get pushed forward, fight these really big legends young. I, I would like to see that. Skill-wise, I think, so, I think we're starting to see that more. Because skill wise, the guys like Shavkat and the guys like um, Shavkat, that dude's he's yes. Skill skill wise, he's I mean age, he's young obviously, but skill wise, he you can't say that he isn't a top contender skill wise. He, he's showing it every single time he steps in the ring, and then an the octagon. Excuse he, me. People are ducking him. That's why that's a real issue. Who is he? He will be a champ. Who? Well, if you look at every champion on the road to being a champion, Rachmanov. Mm-hmm. That's who you're talking about, right? Yeah. He's got a fight coming up. He's fighting uh, yeah. Jeff Neal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna be a good one. That was uh, really good one. one of the fights I was hyped up for. That I was gonna talk about coming up. I was gonna talk about that one, and this is my personal favorite dude that I'm going for at bantamweight is uh, Adrian Yanez. That's the dude I'm looking for. I like Adrian Yanez, man. I like him. I like. I'm watching him on his come up, and I'm liking it. Like him against Rob Font should be. 
It should be fireworks oh. or a very technical boxing match for MMA wise. Like Yanez is not ranked, right? Like Yanez is unranked. He's and number Font thirteen is currently. Ranked, right? Okay, all it's, right. It's all six right. against thirteen. It's but, on the same card as uh, Moonface versus uh, Christian Rodriguez. Moonface, <laughs> come on, man, don't do it. Yeah, that kid's you're, gonna you're, find me and beat me like down, that, man. man. I don't want no smoke, man. I'm sorry, man. I apologize. Is, uh, let me ask, let me ask, oh, the, let me ask a question: Is Ilya Taporia is he a thirty five as well? No, he's thirty five. Uh, no, one forty five. One forty five. Right. But he fluctuates between 145 and 155. Like, he can go in between two weight classes. But he dominated I, Bryce Mitchell, bro. Like, yeah. he fucking destroyed he, him, dude. He made what? Thug Nasty not nasty. He yeah, is, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> he said he made him Thug Platable. Thug yeah. Tasty. Yeah. <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> he, he did him dirty, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like, I was like, you know, I was going for Bryce Mitchell, too. Like, I thought he might have been able to pull out another twister, you know, but nah, bro. Fucking Elliot Tapuria, he's good on his feet, man. He, that boy's got some hands. He gonna fight Patty next. I'm telling you, he's gonna fight I, Patty next. Yeah, he I hope should. So. They have, I'll, take they the, have the I'll take that back. They have the beat. Even though they're probably, the they're probably gonna uh, protect Patty exactly. at all costs, but that's exactly. the fight that should happen. Especially after... What happened there? I'll say, I'll, hey, Mosey, I'll take this one. I'll give you. Can we talk about the Patty say, and Jared Gordon fight? Hey, Mo, you know, like how four. Two, I'll give two. you Beth? three fights. He won't. He Robert? won't fight him. He won't fight him for the next three fights. Ah, shit, I believe you. Shit, I agree. Shit. <laughs> if if, if they <laughs> haven't like fight that. him within those three fights, I'd be shocked. I, I won't see it. I w- I would love to see All it, right. but there's no way. He's gonna get like two more cans and I, then rank number fifteen. That's what's going to happen with Paddy. Here's my question for you guys. Uh, Charlie Olives versus Benny DeRouche. Oh, good one, John. I think it's a really good fight. I think it's a really good fight. Um, Where does it end at? On the ground? You know? Or is it like, do do you think because they're both both good on the ground, but do you think they just kind of avoid the ground game and just, Want to stand up and bang? Decision. But if they stand up and bang, who fucking wins it? Decision. You know? So here's go the thing. Decision. What is, Darius? You know, Matt, they all have got it if they stand up and is, bang, dude. Well, I don't know. Darius has knockout power. He's shown it in the past. Well, so yeah, he does. Like, he he hurt Justin Gaethje. Gaethje has admitted that he that was the hardest he's been hit. And he's been hit by a lot of dudes. Charles? So, he he said that Charles hit him hard, hurt him early, and just had him just messed up the whole time. Poirier has said that he like Charles can bang, hurts a lot. So, uh, but the question is, are we getting the Charles Oliveira that beat Chandler Poirier and Gaethje, or are we getting the Charles Oliveira that likes to quit, that phones it in, that gets beaten by Islam and doesn't even put up a fight well it depends on, do you uh, think maybe because like ever since that islam fight do you think like maybe he's in that same mindset where he gives up because that kind of what it looked like when i saw him fight islam like he just fucking gave up a little bit maybe that was just yeah. me i don't know but no, maybe, I, it I, might, I, might just be because islam's that damn good uh no hold on john hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on john hold on chris how long have you yep. been watching uh, Charles fight? Oh, I just started watching his, like, Super Rain. Like, since, okay, like, 2020. Okay. Yeah. If you go back and watch old Charles, he was notorious for getting Oh, no, I've seen it. Look at Featherweight yeah, Charles. Yeah, no, Featherweight no, Charles, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. No, I've he seen had it. all like, the like, promise. He gave up against, um, um, against Felder, you know? Like, he just fucking gives up. He got subbed by Anthony Pettis. And that's all I have to say about that's that. A... So, and I guess that's where I was like kind of backtracking to. Like, you think because he got subbed this time, like maybe he's in that same exact mindset? No, no, no. no. I, as I before, don't know, it's like just, he, Islam might he be that good. Dominant... I think Islam might be just that good. That's all I. 
I think Islam is great. I don't want to diminish from him, but I don't think Oliveira was at a hundred percent. I don't think he was. He just if you look at the performance, and I have, I've rewatched that fight probably no joke fifteen times now. And he is not moving. He's not fighting like he does in the three fights leading up to it. I think something. Something mental was going on because he wasn't putting up what he usually does. You know, he wasn't. I, no, I agree with you. I think something mental did happen. I think mentally he got in the ring with uh, Islam Makashev. Well, he he was upset that they didn't do the fight in Brazil. They did it in Abu Dhabi, which favors Islam. He wasn't the champ because he missed weight. But so I think all that factored into it. But regardless, I think. Islam is going to lose to Volkanovski. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, do, you live in, do, you live, do you live in Florida? Yeah. Do you live anywhere near, do you, do you live anywhere near Jacksonville? Brian, <laughs> we're talking together? about this uh, later. I was going to say, yeah, we we're got, talking hey, about this later. Yeah. We'll talk about I this later. Us, I, want to watch, I want to watch that fight with you. we we'll probably okay. all be together. All right, cool, cool, cool. cool. We'll probably oh, all be together. Oh, invite <laughs> you live too far, Chris. You de- you decided not to hang out with us no more. Oh, shut up, dude. Whatever, man. I come over, bro. Come on. It's been a year, but I come <laughs> over. <laughs> Once a year, I'll be there. I'll be there. Well, to be fair, you haven't invited me, so, yeah. Hey, no man. whole year. I, I, have a, I have a question for the panel. So... Out of all the band, out of all the um, top ten bantamweights on the roster, who do you who do you think would most um, match, match up the best? I guess I, guess I can say with uh, Figgy on his welcome in fight. Who do you think would match up the best with him? Well, let me look at the rankings real quick. Marlon Vera is still who. Who beat Carbrandt that last one? Was it? Oh shit! Or is that when he dropped oh, down? Marlon Marais. I'm tri- I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Give uh, give Peter Yan to Figgy. Jesus Peter Christ! Young? He's fighting uh Mirab next. Yeah, that's gonna be a good one. I feel like you know, you know, it's like it's kind of a story too because. Mirab is uh, Al Jermaine's training partner, and Mirab like refuses to fight for the championship because of Al Jermaine. Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz? No, we don't need Dominic. Man. No. I'm not, I don't hate that. Dominic man. Cruz, that. man. Like Dominic, Dominic Cruz. Cruz needs to fight. Dominic Cruz needs to fight Rob Rule Rosas Jr. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Do- Dominic it's, 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 Cruz. No love for Raul. Dominic Cruz, Rose's. man. Dominic Cruz. Bro, he ain't the dominant no more, man. Dominic Cruz or the winner of Rob Font and Adrian Yanez should fight Figgy. Okay. I can keep behind that. Rob Font, the winner. So, of- like, you think uh, Iggy and, like, uh, you think Figgy deserves a um, top five opponent? Absolutely. Damn, on the first on the first jump, first run. Yeah, absolutely. Damn. Okay. He was a champion twice. So then, true, well, true. He's former champion now, but so you're saying that if he wins, then what? Do you, do you or, him, uh, or was, hear me what, out. What if he, what if he wins? What, 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 what or he hear me out. Hear me out. Go. If it does end up being Sean O'Malley versus Aljamain, let Cejudo fight Figgy. Out bantamweight, they won't. They won't do it. They train together. So, Mirab trains with Al Jermaine, and he's number three. Well, he's just gonna sit at number one and just wait. I mean, yeah. If Daniel Cormier, he dropped down to uh, white heavyweight because of a cane. Piera competing at middleweight because he didn't want to take away from Glover. So it's not unusual. It's not unusual, but you know, very valid. It happens. 
Yeah, you're so, right. GSP left uh, 170 for uh, oh boy for Rory. Mm-hmm. But look at Team Alpha Male. All them dudes are all fighting in the same divisions just about. Yeah, let's not talk about Team Alpha Male. I think it's, it's case by case. But... So, um, Mo, <clears throat> you're saying you would like Figgy to match up with who again? Cejudo. Cejudo? John, who you got? You. <laughs> I, I said Peter Jan. Peter Jan, goddamn. Peter Jan. And, um, hey, that's probably the best matchup, though. That's a good one. That'd be a great fight. <laughs> I like it. I like, well, it. I like that. I like that. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Like, Listen, I like, it from a, I like it from a violence standpoint, just pure violence. But I'm saying, like, if you're welcoming a guy to a division, new division, okay, you're, giving him like, uh, you're giving him a top you're giving him a top tier contender off the rip. You're talking about if he wins that matchup, he got to be in line for a title. Exactly. Right. He exactly. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a what? Former champ, right? Twice. Yep. Multi, so, multi-time champ. He's been a so, champion more you know, it, like, that's sort of the, the rule, right? Like, if you if you go up a weight class, like, you're fighting top-tier guys, you're trying to get a championship fight, right? So, he should be fighting the, the best of the best to try to get that title shot if he's moving up, right? For example, like, Chris Weidman, Luke Rockhold. What happened to them when they went to 205? Murder. Exactly. Yeah, rock. Yeah. They went night night. Listen, what I'm happened to Conor McGregor? I, I'm a, I'm a, listen, I'm a firm believer that if you cut weight a fight at a lower class and it's been advantageous to you, chances are when you move up, you're going to get your soul snatched. Is like if you there's only been a few examples of guys who've moved up and looked really really good. I can think uh, Robert Whitaker, for instance, when he went when he moved from 170 to 185, mm-hmm. he's looked really really good. He's been champion. He's been a top uh, of the middleweight division for years, and he's moved up from 170. But other than that, I can't think of anybody. Poor that's a. Look, that's look, but, well, yeah, McGregor, yeah. McGregor only has two fights. One anymore. fight with McGregor. One fight. It was, it was it's two, one two fight, fights. Man. He moved up two weight classes. Hold up. Well, he moved up two weight classes. Technically, he, yes, he did. Are you talking about him fighting Cerrone at 170? <laughs> fighting who at 170? What, Cerrone. <laughs> oh, Cer- yeah, dude, that was... With dubs a dub. That was not even called for. Like, why, why did that happen? Dubs a dub. I, dub. I don't, I don't know. No, a win, a win is definitely a win. A win is definitely a win. However, he's not anywhere near the top tier of the 155 pound division or the 175 pound division. McGregor? Hey, he beat uh, no. Nate Diaz too. He got two you're, dubs you're, at 170. Really he got choked out oh, by Nate that Diaz as well. Hey, two and one. He two and one. He, yeah, exactly. No one and one, right? No two and one. He got Cerrone, he got Nate Diaz, and then he lost to Nate Diaz. So he's two and one. No, he lost to he lost to the champ at fucking one fifty five. What are you talking about? He lost to uh Poirier? No, wait, he lost to Poirier. Or, 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 he lost Connor. to Khabib. I'm talking lost about to, Connor to, going up at one seventy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm about to say Connor got body that. Oh, at one fifty five. Yeah, he he only got what, like, yeah. one win at one fifty five, right? He moved up to one fifty five. Well, he fought at one seventy though. What I'm talking about with uh Cerrone and uh Nate. He's under. He's uh one and one, two and one. Well, he fought one fifty five the second time. They made weight the second time, right? Who against Nate? Yeah. No, it was one seventy again. It was one seventy both times? Yes. Oh, I'm, I guess I was unaware of that. I didn't know he was. I was one seventy both times. Yeah. I thought they made. I thought the first fight was short notice. Yeah, it was short it was, notice, so they weighed at one seventy for Nate. Correct. And then he did it again. At 170? Yeah, they did it again at 170. And McGregor demanded it be at the same exact weight, so they couldn't be any uh, any arguments that it was the weight that made him win again or win like them. So what made um, him what made him run around the ring at the end of that fight? What, what, what made him like run from Nate Diaz at the end of that second fight? Was it the weight? He needed them points. Like, needed them points. Uh, okay, okay, the judges, okay. the judges, the judges, the judges. Yep. Well, 155, that's, that's but he's one, only like one and three or something like that. One and two, something like that. One. Three. He beat. He beat. He beat. Um, Alvarez. He beat Eddie. He beat Eddie Alvarez. 
He lost to Poirier twice. Lost to Dustin twice. Oh. Lost to uh, Habib once. So that one and three. Let's say one of those. Like that injury. I don't count injury as a, as a loss. I, I do. Because he was getting his ass whipped before that injury, too. Very injury, true. That injury bailed him out. He didn't, that injury didn't help Poirier. That injury helped Connor. Connor would have just got more of an ass whipped. Oh, well, Connor, Connor went in there uh, injured. Which I mean, most most players were injured. Though. Nobody's ever hundred percent. It's the nature of the sport. Yo, son, I mean, Chell's first fight with Anderson. I think he had uh, bruised ribs or cracked ribs from Machida from Machida kicking him in the stomach. Well, shit, is Amanda Nunes the only fighter to go up and wait and just not lose? Oh, Cejudo. Cejudo. Oh yeah, well she's. Oh, I, was say, I think she's the only fighter in her weight class for um, <laughs> the other weight. Man, there's two and a half girls in uh. Cejudo. <laughs> two, two and a half. Cejudo. Cejudo's <laughs> undefeated at bantamweight. So far. Yeah, uh, so far. So what about Jessica Andrade? Jessica Andrade actually did really well against um. Lauren Methy. Yeah, she did. Jessica Andrade is the female Rob Whitaker. And she's like just cleans everybody up on the way to the title and then gets to the title with like mixed results. She she might win it. So, so, she might so, win so, it. So is she like a gatekeeper, you think? No, she's not. She's, better than, a, she's better than a gatekeeper because like she can win. She's won the title, right? Didn't she, beat, didn't she like slam Rose on her head? and? Yeah, she power dunked uh, Rose on her head. In Brazil, yeah, so yeah. she's won the title before. It's not like she's incapable of holding the strap. She has before, however, most of the time she just cleans everybody out in the middle, gets to the title, and gets body. Kind of like Robert Whitaker. He's in the same boat. Can we can we talk about uh, Gaethje being a uh, gatekeeper? Just like I Gaethje. think so. I, I think he is, man. At this point, yeah, and and Dustin. Dustin Gaethje is a Both much them, more... Man, but, but, but that's a really no, Dustin, wait, wait, wait. Dustin, <laughs> Dustin is not a gatekeeper. Dustin is a perennial title contender. He just can't... He's like the Buffalo Bills of MMA. Like He gets to the Super Bowl but loses. So do you think like maybe Dustin will like win the undisputed title at 39 years old and he retires? That kind of shit? Like He's like, oh, I finally fucking won it, but... No, he, he, he's, he's not winning. He, he ain't winning the 155 title as long as Islam's there. He's he's gonna retire as a contender. Yeah. So okay. uh, when when it, uh, Volkanovski wins, uh, Buddy, I'll, John, I'll buy you. If, if Volkanovski wins, I'll buy, I'll buy you a bottle of your favorite liquor. All right. Bet. Bet. And, in, and vice versa. And I'll I, drink I, it with him. I, 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 vice versa. Oh, for sure, I'll drink it with you. And vice versa. If uh, Islam wins, I'll, I'll take a bottle of Don Julio. <laughs> okay. I don't know, man. I think... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that one. Oh, about the uh, Islam versus uh, Volk? No, oh, John, what do you drink? What do you, what do you like to drink? Ah. Uh, Honestly, uh, we'll, we'll just uh, call it like a – just give me a, uh, some beer. Okay, we can do, we can do beer. I'll get, okay, I'll get you two cases of beer to make the price equivalent. All right. One bottle. Hold up. Wait a minute. What are you guys doing here? You guys are – We're betting, betting on a future, a future fight. We're betting on uh, – he, he thinks that Volkanovski is going to shock the world. I'm going with Volk too. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not a gambling vote, man. Bro. I'm not a gambling man. Go, baby. I'm not a gambling I like man. I, I like I like being outnumbered. It's, I feel like the odds are now even. You know why so, I'm going with vote. Yeah. There's only one reason why. Why? Because you hate the Russian wrestlers? Is that why? No. Oh, no. I love the Russian no, wrestlers. I, no, no, I know why, Mo. I it know cuts why. deep. I know why. He's <laughs> earned, <laughs> he has earned your respect. He's Matt earned your respect. He has earned my respect. <laughs> this man has earned my respect. He has definitely earned my respect. He he got he got the juice. He got the juice now. He beat Max three times. So true. He, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was night day difference on uh, that the, last. The one. third fight he got he yeah that was bad. He got it. Yeah, that third was fight bad. he got it. I was like, yep, vote vote. He got it. 
Second fight, Both though. Both quick, man. Lost. Holy! three times, and then a minute later, he said, "Oh, he lost that second fight." That's he beat him three times, but he lost that second fight. <laughs> that's, that's all I gotta opium. say about that. <laughs> so I agree. I I think Volk has uh, the height differential is not going to be a, a negative to him. Uh, his center of gravity and everything, he's going to have an easier time getting up than a guy taller. Um, he has that institutional memory of carrying around 215 pounds as a rugby player. Oh, we talked about uh, this at work before. Yes, that, but uh, we're, we're talking about it on the that, pod now. That uh, strength so, like, for being that you, size. Do you all think like home field advantage has a say-so in the whole thing? Where like, they because they're fighting in Australia. Australia, Perth, Perth, I think, yeah. No. no. It does not affect the uh, Dagestanis. I don't think it affects anyone, uh, to be honest. I think it affects the fighter themselves, like the, the home field. Like, it, it's a psychological thing, right? They don't want to... Oh, like, if Lewis anything, it affects the people that's fighting at home more than it affects the visitors, I feel. Makes sense. Because they got more pressure on their much. back. And you might try to do a little bit too much. Especially if they're, like, the countrymen. For example, like Volk, but I don't think it's going to affect him. Uh, Volk has just been, he's like the only champion I can really think of that has been consistently hungry and consistently improving and constantly wanting to fight, taking anyone and everyone, every opportunity to get in there and fight. And it, his skills just keep on getting better and better and better. Because usually you have champions that, you know, they coast. They, you know, they live that large life. They comfortable. Like, he's just... Like, I, I re- re-watched the Max Holloway, all three of them, just recently, like, two days ago. And you look at the first fight to the third fight. Like, it, it is just... It is a character going from level 5 to level 100. It's just incredible. Well, in the second fight, he was only level 6. <laughs> And Max Holloway was level one. No, he was level seven. He won that fight. Really? Because uh, three people that mattered. And hey, those three people, world, like we've been talking yeah. about these judges, they say otherwise. Okay. Those judges got it right that time, though. They did not get it right. That was one time they got it wrong. Majority of the yeah, world is on good. my side. Majority of copium. Oh my God, John. Okay, but let's get off that. Let's get off that. What other good fights are you guys looking forward to besides those? Um, Honestly, let's see here. I'm looking forward to John Jones being champion again. Do you think he has a chance against um Gon? Gon is a fucking big ass dude. Plus, he Gone? moves really well, man. Yeah, do we, do like, we, I don't know, Chris, man. Oh, Chris, Chris, you, did you ask, does he have a chance against Gon? Yeah. Gon? Wait, I, I think it's the opposite. Gone. Does, Gone have, does Gon have a chance against John? Is the question for All me. Right. Gon got uh, out by Nick you, Gon. You, you, right? oh, he got out wrestled by one. understand. He got out wrestled by Ngannou on one, but on a bad knee. Ngannou had fucked up. All right. Just, Fair enough, but you have to understand. I've only watched John Jones. I've been, I've been into the sport for like three years. I've watched John Jones maybe watch maybe fight one time. So I don't know the legacy that John Jones did. What yeah, did yeah, I saw all the. These are the two fights. I saw all the stuff behind it. Like I saw everything John behind it, but uh, with DC. But you have to understand, like he's a heavyweight. He's gonna move a little bit slower because he's heavy. Like, he's not going to be light. I was looking at his training camp, like him training in the gym recently at at the weight he's at, and he's looking good. He's looking really good. He's moving really well as well. So, even if he's he's not as fast and agile as as we used to know him, because, like, uh, I rewatched the DC fight, the second one, with Jones, and they had that... Jones gets taken down, and then he immediately gets right back up. Very agile, very quick. 
even if he's not that fast, that his fight IQ and his knowledge of what to like where to move his body and how to move his body for maximum effect, that's still the same. And you're adding power to it. You're adding that mass. So, you know, you're losing speed, but you're gaining that strength. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, we're pushing uh, almost two hours, so we're going to cut this one. Uh, we could have uh, a part uh, two for it next week or the following week or the next pod. So, uh, so it's good to be back. I'm getting tired. I'm feeling some other things, too, that I want to discuss with whoever else listens to this shit. But it's been fun. <laughs> it's been good being back. It's you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's, let's go. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and end this in a way that we should always end it and go. Thanks for everyone who listened. For anyone share with your friends. Hit the like button on the way out. I am B-Dub. That is Mosey P. We are Ashy Knuckles. Holla at your phone. On that note, zip it up. Zip it out, zip it out bro. Peace. Peace.